Stefan, it's great to see you again. We talked to you earlier this week, but that was before this news of this grant coming from the government, this award. I just wonder, what does it mean for you to get this kind of money? How, how much does that add to the speed with which you could try and come up with a vaccine? Good morning, Becky, and thank you for having me back. Uh, this is extremely helpful because we can accelerate the clinical studies. We can do more studies in parallel because I can, you can see it's a very large grant. So on the clinical front, it's a, it's a great news uh, for everybody. And on the manufacturing front, it is very important because instead of waiting for the data and then scaling up the manufacturing process so we can make as many doses as we can, we are doing both in parallel, and we could not have done this without uh, Barda. And so I'm very thankful for the administration and, of course, for members of Congress and members of the U.S. Senate for passing those packages. I was very helpful. Stefan, does that mean you're actually starting building a manufacturing plant or getting things prepared so you could roll out that vaccination potentially very uh, in large scale very quickly? So we already have a plant in Massachusetts. What we're doing as we speak with this funding is scaling the process so we can make bigger and bigger uh, reactions. So we make a more mass of a vaccine per unit of time. So that's very useful. We're buying new equipment. So we can also have more rooms making the product. We are trying to work with Barda leadership to be able to just make as many products as we can. And we're already even looking at potential new avenues to add to our existing facility. Let's talk about timelines. I, I, I know that's tricky. I, I know a lot of things could go wrong along the way, and there could be things that slow you down. But best case scenario, when do you think you could have a vaccine that has been tested and gone through clinical trials? When do you think you could actually start manufacturing that? And when do you think you'd be able to manufacture it to scale that you could uh, see 200 million or, or more vaccinations that roll out and are able to get us herd immunity in the United States? Those are the types of milestones that we've been told we need to be watching for. Yes, and our team, uh, working with you know, Dr. Tony Fauci team at the NIH, who is running the phase one and the BARDA leadership, are talking about those timelines uh, daily. And we are always working, trying to be creative to shave any day we can. So basically, at the high level, if everything goes perfectly, uh, we should have a safety data of a phase one for that first cohort of healthy adults uh, in the spring. As soon as we have this data, we're working with the FDA that we can start the phase two in hundreds of healthy subjects. Because of this funding from BARDA, we're able to do a lot of different subpopulation study. As you know, we need to understand that the vaccine works in the elderly, that the vaccine works with people with comorbidity factors. That is really important. And then through the summer, we should be able to get more data on immunogenicity, i.e., how much antibody is made from vaccination in people's blood, and also how good is the antibody in their blood to bind and neutralize the virus. That is very important in terms of the performance and efficacy of a vaccine. And then going to big efficacy study, testing thousands of people, which we start uh, up to be able to start in the fall. And so if all those things go well, uh, we are hoping to be able to uh, be ready commercially to make the vaccine widely available in the U.S. in 2021. Stefan, it's Meg Terrell. Uh, I know it's difficult because the trials are ongoing. We are waiting to see the data. And we are dealing with this complicated question, of course, in the report about Gilead's remdesivir this morning as well. We're not in precedented times right now. D can you tell us anything about what this funding signals about um, HHS's and your optimism about what you're seeing in the trial. Does this signal anything positive in terms of how well uh, it is either safe or, or working? I think it's still very early. We have not a lot of the data from the trial, but as you know, Meg, our technology is a platform. And this is our 10th vaccine going into clinical studies. Uh, we've actually on Tuesday shared some new uh, positive data in human on our Zika vaccine. And so because we use the same technology across all the products and that we have already been working with Dr. Sparchi's team on the Middle East respiratory syndrome vaccine in the past with very good data in preclinical model, all of us are optimistic. So far, the safety looks good. Uh, as we announced this morning, we're expanding 
into two cohorts of older uh, healthy subjects, a cohort between 51 and 70 year old, and the cohort of people that are above 71 year old. And so that's a good sign because as you can assume, if we had some safety concern in the first cohorts, the 18 to 55 year old, we will not have expanded to uh, people that are more vulnerable. Hey, Meg, let me ask you a question. We, we, we are talking about all these promising things, these promising developments that are taking place, whether it be therapeutics or vaccines, with the news from Gilead, with this news from Moderna. And then we spoke with Bobby Kotick earlier this week, and he talked a little bit about the convalescent blood transfusions. We've got the CEO of the Mayo Clinic coming on in just a little bit to talk more about that. But that's another promising potential therapeutic in this, where you take antibodies from the blood of people, the serum of people, who have already recovered from this disease and hopefully find a way to generate that, put it into to sick patients. And they are seeing that uh, have some success as well. What, what do you think just about the pace of the progress we have seen? Is it much better than you would have anticipated a month ago, on, on track with what you would have anticipated? As you said, these are unprecedented times. The pace of drug and vaccine development that we've observed in this pandemic is faster than anything I've seen in the last 10 plus years of covering healthcare. Um, I compared the situation with Ebola, which felt like an incredibly urgent situation, even though that was happening in West Africa and didn't come to the U.S. in any major way. They were using convalescent plasma there, too. And I would say um, the speed with which that got up and running is comparable with what we've seen before. Uh, and also the, um, the promise of that approach, uh, it does seem like it is helping. Um, there is, of course, a limiting factor in that you need plasma donations from recovered people. And one frustration is that many people who had less severe disease who weren't in the hospital haven't been tested, don't officially know that they had COVID-19. And so it's difficult for them to be plasma donors. Um, but those are wrinkles in the system that hopefully your guests will, will talk about getting worked out. Hey, Stefan, um, s separate question about uh, the, 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 the vaccine that you're working on. How does it differ from what we heard um, from the approach that J&J &J and Alex Gorski uh, plan to be taking and the big investment that, that, that they're uh, initiating? Yes, so those are, I would say, more traditional, older technologies. Uh, so they already have some experience. Uh, they have some manufacturing capacity. So they're just different approaches. I think also, you know, uh, Sanofi has another one with yet another technology. I mean, it's important for the world that a lot of vaccines gets to market. If you just make a comparison to a flu a business, uh, you have three or four big manufacturers for flu. And so we need to have several vaccines so that we can supply billions of doses around the world. Uh, and we need to make sure that at least one makes it. So having a lot of shots on goal is very important, which is why I think Varda and the government is very smart to help several companies. If more make it wonderful, but we need at least one to make it. <laughs> 